the Bible says in Amos 3, 7, for the Lord God does nothing without revealing his secrets to his servants, the prophets. Hank and Brenda Kuhneman are accurate prophetic voices that are honored all around the globe. They are passionate about connecting people to the word of the Lord and bringing the body of Christ to its God intended fullness and glory. Join them now and let the word of the Lord inspire, empower, and bless your life and bring you to a whole new level. Are you ready for the accelerated suddenlies of God to invade you, especially if you've been feeling like you're in a prison? Hello, we're Hank and Brenda, and you're watching New Level. And today on this broadcast, we're going to talk about how God is coming with the power of His right hand. Just like in Acts 16, where the prison doors suddenly, immediately were released and closed doors were open at the hand of God. Today is your moment to be free. Today is your moment to experience the sudden, immediate release of God's hand concerning you. Well, Hank, this has been such an awesome grouping of programs, and I, I'm expecting something miraculous to happen yeah. in people's lives today. We're going to be talking about accelerated answers to prayer, but accelerated miracles that break you out of places where you've been stuck. Maybe you're in a place today where you have struggled to attain that breakthrough. Maybe there's something you've been praying about for a long time, and it seems like something is just stuck. It's not moving. Come on, Hank. Yeah, We've all been right, there exactly. a time or two. And so I just want to make sure that you are tuned into every moment of this today Amen. because we are going to be talking about accelerated blessings and miracles. And how many of you know that is a biblical concept? And you're going to learn some powerful things today. And I believe this is your season to see miraculous answers to prayer. We're going to pray for you at the end. So stay tuned. Do you ever feel trapped and unable to fully accomplish your spiritual goals? For your love gift this month to help us proclaim deliverance to those who are hurting, Hank and Brenda Kuhneman want to send you this powerful teaching series titled, Coming Out of Your Internal Prison. One of the keys for living a successful life is to deal with the emotional strongholds that so many of us don't realize are there. It's time for you to be unlocked, delivered, and set free. For your gift of $35 or more, we will send you Hank and Brenda's four CD set coming out of your internal prison with powerful teaching that will elevate you to a place of freedom. In addition, you will also receive Brenda's companion book, including a set of declarations which confront the conditions that bind you and help manifest your breakthrough. To get yours today, call us toll free at 855-777-7907 and mention offer number 817 or visit us online at hankandbrenda.org. talk about coming out of your prison and I told you that there's a pattern that I discovered of of how to accelerate you know we've been talking about it being a year of divine transfer we've been talking about God raising our expectation uh, to believe for his intervention but I noticed there's something that gets the attention of God that accelerates his movement his hand towards you to bless you and so I want to share with you what that is and if you're in some kind of prison today maybe you're bound by something maybe there's something the enemy has been bugging you with, and you feel like you've been under several attacks, I believe that this is your day for God to visit you. And I'm going to show you something that if you will appropriate it in your life, you're going to see the same results as those that I'm going to show you. Look at Acts chapter 16. We pick up in verse 23. This is about Paul and Silas who were uh, put in prison. It says, and when they had laid uh, many stripes, in other words, when they whipped Paul and Silas, they kept uh, cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who having received such a charge, thrust them into, notice this, the inner prison. Someone say inner prison. Inner. Do you know that there are different types of prison? There's the outer section of the prison, but then there's what was the inner prison, and that was where you really put people to punish them. And you know that there are people that are listening to the sound of my voice today that maybe people know what your outer prison is. They can see some of the things that you struggle with. Maybe you've got an anger problem and it's very evident. You know, uh, maybe you're a pride, uh, you're bound by pride or who knows and people can see that. Maybe there's an addiction that you have and people can see it, whatever. 
But here's the point. Inner prisons are those things that we deal with privately when no one's watching, no one's listening. Uh, God knows it. He's there to deliver us. And the enemy knows it because he's the one trying to create that inner prison. But I want you to look now because there's hope in the midst of prison. There's hope in the midst of your pain. There's hope in the midst of your trial. If you look and continue to read, it says he put them in the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas, watch this, prayed. Now, a lot of folks pray, but they're still not seeing acceleration. I'm convinced that we've got to keep reading. They prayed and sang praises unto God. What did they do? They prayed and they worshiped. Someone say worship. They didn't just pray, they prayed and worship. Worship is a key, I'm telling you, to get God to come suddenly. There's something about worship that just God accelerates time. It's, it's like <clears throat> all of a sudden he comes. I think so many times we're spending so much time praying and that's important. But how many times are we magnifying God? He knows our needs before we ask. But when we magnify God, guess what? It makes our problem smaller. Let's continue to read because watch what happens. They prayed and they worshiped. Watch. And the prisoners heard them and what? Suddenly. How many need a sudden release? Come on. You need a sudden release from the prison, from the lack, from the struggle, from the pain, from the sickness. You need a sudden release. Notice they prayed and they worshiped and what? Come on, let me hear you say it. And suddenly, come on, someone say suddenly like you mean it. Suddenly, suddenly. Notice it wasn't and 10 days later, suddenly. Let's keep reading. There was a great earthquake. Something was moving. Something was changing. Something was shifting. Something was shaken. Come on, it was jailhouse rock. Thank you very much. Don't worry about it, mama. I ain't going to say it no more. Well, there was prison going on. There was shaking going on. You know what I mean? There was some jailhouse rock that took place, you know? You see what I'm saying? All right, anyway, so there was shaking going on. Come on, how many need something shaking? You don't need Elvis to show up. You need Jesus to show up. In fact, the Lord woke me up. I got a new word for you coming. The Lord woke me up two weeks ago, and I know he was standing by my bed. And he said these words, the Lord himself. And I shut up, and I said, what did you say to me, God? Then there was a silence. He said, the Lord himself. And I laid back down. I said, okay, speak to me. What are you, what are you saying to me? He said, go down, go down, go down to my, my word. I want to show you. And do you know what the Lord said to me? He said, not an angel, not a man. The Lord himself is going to show up for my people. That's what he said. God is going to step in for us. Something has shifted. Something is being accelerated. Are you listening to me? Oh, come on. I can hear the devil in the midst of jailhouse rock saying, don't be cruel. But I'm telling you, I'm about to hit him upside his head because he's been cruel to you. Suddenly, there was an earthquake. Some things were getting shook up. Come on, how many of you need some stuff to get shook up in your life? Broke loose. Come on. Free from depression. Free from rejection. Free from marital strife. Free from thinking that your prayers are never going to be answered or there's no longer hope for you. Come on. As long as you've got breath in your body, there's hope for you. God isn't done with you yet. And immediately, come on, keep reading. Immediately, all the doors were open. Come on. When we worship God, we're not just talking about one door opening, one answer to prayer. We're talking about to the God who does exceedingly, abundantly, beyond all that we could ask or think. We're talking about doors upon doors, blessing upon blessing. We're talking about breakthrough upon breakthrough upon breakthrough. We're talking about the God, the Lord himself coming to set you free, to heal you, to answer your prayer suddenly, immediately. 
Now watch this. Look at Zechariah chapter 9, verse 11. I always say that Zechariah 9, 11 is the answer for us when we got attacked in 9, 11. But maybe you're in a place where you feel like you've been in this prison. Watch this. Zechariah 9, 11, and for thee also, by the blood of thy covenant, I've sent forth prisoners out of the pit where there is no water. Now watch this. Turn. If you feel like you're in a prison, turn. Change your direction. Change your mindset. Change your words. Turn to the stronghold. Who's the stronghold? Jesus. His word is the stronghold. Your covenant with Jesus is your stronghold. You prisoners of depression. No, it says you prisoners of hope. Come on, there's hope for you. You can be free. You are blessed. You can walk in total healing and deliverance. You don't have to have outer prisons, inner prisons. You don't have to be bound. You prisoners of hope, even today do I declare that I will render double for your trouble. Someone say double Double. for my trouble. And guess what? When God starts rendering double, you go out and get some double stuff cookies and you celebrate, all right? You get double stuff. Amen? Some people, they drink to that. You eat double stuff to that. Amen? Now, let me talk to you about some prisons that, that some folk are in. And, I, and I, you know, I was trying to, you know, look at it differently, you know, because I know that there's, you know, certain prisons that might be the obvious. But I started thinking, you know, there's a prison of backsliding that I'm watching in the American church. And uh, people are bound by it. You know, in other words, they, they come to church or maybe they don't come to church. Maybe that's the problem. That's why they're backslid. But, you know, getting in church, being regular, if this is your church family, you that watch by live stream, be regular on, on connecting every week as you can. If this is your church here, come, become a member, get involved, and it'll keep you from backsliding, from sliding back. But the spirit of backsliding is a prison, and it's upon many Christians today, especially in the United States, where they've got one foot trying to serve God and another in the world. Amen? They go live it up during the week, but you've got to get to church on Sunday, right? Like that's supposed to fix it all. No, Mm-mm. we don't need hypocrisy. We, what we need is consistency of people who will walk with God. The spirit of backsliding is upon a lot of Christians. And, and let me say this. If you drive down a road, what do you see in the middle of the road besides stripes? Now, if you go to other countries, they don't care about those stripes. Believe me. It's like four to one lane of cars. It's crazy. So what do you see if you're driving down the highway? You usually see roadkill. Right? Road kill. In other words, that's a very dangerous place to be in the middle of the road. Now, Jesus said it this way. Th- this, these way. He said it this way. These way. He said it this way. Okay. Here's what Jesus said. He said, I'd rather have you hot or cold than to have you in the middle of the road backsliding, called lukewarm. And so we got to watch the prison of backsliding. And the way you do that is you worship. You know, if people would worship, you know, I get concerned when I see people who can't connect to God and worship. You know, that's a dangerous place to be. If you're going through a problem, the worst thing to do is come to church and just stand there like you're mad and you're mad at God, you're upset. No, you get into worship. It'll keep you from backsliding. It'll keep you from falling away. Do you ever feel trapped and unable to fully accomplish your spiritual goals? For your love gift this month, to help us proclaim deliverance to those who are hurting, Hank and Brenda Kuhneman want to send you this powerful teaching series titled, Coming Out of Your Internal Prison. One of the keys for living a successful life is to deal with the emotional strongholds that so many of us don't realize are there. It's time for you to be unlocked, delivered, and set free. For your gift of $35 or more, we will send you Hank and Brenda's four CD set coming out of your internal prison with powerful teaching that will elevate you to a place of freedom. In addition, you will also receive Brenda's companion book, including a set of declarations which confront the conditions that bind you and help manifest your breakthrough. To get yours today, call us toll free at 855-777-7907 and mention offer number 817 or visit us online at hankandbrenda.org. There's also the...
of rebellion. I've never seen people so on purpose rebelling against God, hating him, talking against him, trying to show that they're against him. Are you, are you listening? I've never seen it like this before. Spirit of fear, prison of fear. People are in fear. People are so afraid of the future. In fact, you know, I was talking to somebody when I uh, was at Sid Roth, and they said to me, they said, man, my relative is so afraid because the Lord prophesied you got to go back and watch the show about what God's plan is for this health care. God, God's got this thing all figured out. And one of the things he told me, he said, do you think I'm cold-hearted or uncaring regarding health care, regarding this nation? He said, I would have never offered my son, and he would have never come willingly with his stripes on his back if we were unconcerned about health and the healing of the nation and the healing of the people. But see, God's going to let him bicker, and he's going to let him fight, and he's going to push him to a table, and he's going to bring unity. You watch. It's all part of his plan. And there is a fighting season that we're coming into in the body of Christ in the United States. Actually, not the body of Christ, in the United States. So don't, don't think that things aren't happening. Don't think that God's not working. Don't believe everything you read. There's a fighting season we're coming into, and it's going to happen in the spring through the summer. It's going to get a little weird. It's going to get a little strange. There's going to be a lot of lies, a lot of accusations, but don't worry about it. It doesn't mean that God's not winning. There was giants before the promise. And a few of these giants are going to get exposed. And God had to wait until certain things was not in the house anymore so he can pull the, the covers back and show what he's about to do. Now, anyway, wherever that came from. Anyway, the, the spirit, there's also a spirit of frustration. People are so frustrated, okay? There's the prison of strife and discord and, and fighting. I've never seen so many people fight. You get on social media, people argue. I don't know who, like I said, I don't know who invented the comment section, but I think they should just eliminate it. In other words, the rule is, you, if you cannot say anything nice, no comments are welcome. There's the spirit of seduction and, and promiscuity. You know, uh, I think the older I get, uh, it seems like in every generation, the more um, we see skin. Uh, it used to be we didn't, we didn't see as much skin, but now we're seeing more and more skin. Uh, clothing is different, uh, at least it's changed. In fact, um, uh, it was funny, Sid Roth asked me what I was going to wear on the show, so I sent him an orange laser shoot suit with, uh, <laughs> with some big old boots. But he said, Hank, if you were going to show up with that, he said we would have um, <clears throat> had Richard preach. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, let's go on. I want to show you something. Look at 1 Samuel 16. What do you do if the enemy is pushing on you? What do you do if you're in one of these prisons? What do you do if you're struggling and you're frustrated and you're like, man, the devil's up in my business or I'm not sure what it is. I just don't feel right. I, I don't feel good. I can't get happy. I, I, I struggle with, with being encouraged. I struggle with believing that I'm ever going to be healed. I struggle with, with just a, a secret sin that I don't seem like I can get victory over. Maybe that's you. I want to show you something when in regards to worship that is so important. King Saul was oppressed by the enemy, and, and the King James says that it was an evil spirit sent from God, but really it was an evil spirit sent from hell. And there was a constant pressing of demon spirits on King Saul, and he wasn't getting any relief. He was, he was constantly oppressed. In fact, he was acting like a maniac. And so he said, is there anybody that can help me? And so they went, and they said, there's a young man named David who is a skillful musician, and uh, he, he plays on the harp, and so they sent for David. He comes in. He's this young man. They said he was good looking, but his looks wasn't enough to, to help him. What was needed was someone who had the ability to touch God through worship. And so you, let's pick up what happened. In verse 22, David is uh, playing on his harp, and Saul sent for him. And notice what happens in verse 23. Whenever that evil spirit came to Saul, David would take up his harp and he'd begin to worship God. Someone say, worship God. Worship. Notice that word, then. Then relief would come to oppress Saul and he would feel better and the evil spirit would leave him. Listen, if you're going through a problem today, I want to encourage you, just don't leave church and, and, and put on, you know, talk radio. And, 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 and even you got to be careful with Christian radio. You know, sometimes Christian radio is as depressing as the country music station next to it. Are you here? Just because it's Christian doesn't mean that it's edifying you. You know, some of the saddest moods I've ever been in is when I've listened to a Christian uh, uh, music station, radio. It's like losing your mood ring and you don't know how you feel about it. <laughs> I 
Holy Spirit, I need your help here. Anyway, so, but you know, I mean, I, I've had times where I've listened, I'm like, you know, I'm so depressed. I'm, I'm supposed to be magnifying Jesus. But you know what? When you plug in worship and praise music, man, it'll lift you up. And whatever's trying to mess with you, depress you, struggle, make you, cause you to struggle, make you feel like you're never going to come out of any kind of prison, I, I, I would suggest get some, you know, Binion music, David and Nicole, and put it on in your home. Put it on in your car. Come on. Get praise and worship going that talks about magnifying God and how great he is. And I guarantee you, you will notice a change. So let's go on. Let's look at 1 Kings 18, and let's look at this pattern real quick. And then the worship team is going to come up, and we're going we're gonna to pray, and we're going to worship for just a little bit. Look at 1 Kings 18. Now, we know the story of Elijah, and we know that he was taking on 400 prophets of Baal, and uh, they served on Ahab's staff, and, and we, we know that uh, in 1 Kings 18, 21, the prophet Elijah stands up and he says, all right, you guys are caught between two opinions, because, you know, he had a big audience there. And so he comes up with an idea, and he decides to tell them, he says, all right, here's the deal, the God that answers by fire, he is the true God. And so he, he does a showdown. And he says, you call on God, prophets of Baal, you do whatever you think will bring fire down upon the altar from your God, and I'm going to do what I do to bring the fire of God from the only and one true God. And so there was a showdown that took place. And so let's pick up the story. Now watch this. Watch what it was that got an answer within a couple minutes. I'm telling you, there is an acceleration. We just read about Paul and Silas. Suddenly, immediately, an earthquake. Come on. Doors open immediately. I mean, they got a response immediately. What would have happened if Paul and Silas would have just stayed in jail and complained the whole time? Lord, we're two apostles. This ain't right. Right? We're tithers. I've heard that one. We give more than anybody else. And then what about Paul? I pray in tongues more than all. I shouldn't even be here. <laughs> what if he would have gone down that road like some Christian folk do? Well, I prayed. I fasted. I gave. I even know the mayor. And yet you're in prison. None of those things opened the prison door. What opened the prison door was they prayed and they worshiped God. I sense very strongly in my heart that today is your day of visitation where the Lord himself is coming to set you free. In fact, I hear in my heart the Lord speaking these words to you. For you have said, God, I feel as though I've been in a prison. I feel as though I cannot be free. But the Spirit of God says to you that this is your moment that the visitation of my hand has come to you to suddenly break you forth and to accelerate my blessings concerning you. For this is a new season that I've brought unto you, and this is a season where you shall break forth on the right side, on the left side, and you shall break forth as you take a step forward. For do not look back, says the Lord, for that is a past season. For what I am bringing now does not just affect you, but it's affecting your family as it did in that day where the jailer was free and he was saved and his household as well. This is the moment, says the the Spirit of God for your accelerated freedom, but also where I am coming to visit your house. For this marks a moment in time now where you will say surely out of your mouth, look at what the Lord has done. And even right now in the name of Jesus, I prophesy for your mind to see, for your ears to hear, for your mind to receive a fresh wave of revelation from heaven. I speak right now in the name of Jesus that right now your whole being receives your deliverance and sees an accelerated blessing. I hear the Spirit of God say even right now around the corner, look around the corner and see what is about to come. For what has been spoken and declared and that that which you have prayed in the midnight hour. It surely says the spirit of grace shall come to pass and it will not be hindered. Don't speak hindrance from your mouth. Don't speak that it won't happen or say, where is it? Is it here or there or it'll never happen? Don't declare that, says the Lord, for there are things shifting and happening in the realm of the spirit right now that you do not see. For I am opening doors that no man can close and I'm closing the doors that the devil cannot open. And in the name of Jesus, 
You are set free. This is your hour. Say it's your hour, for the Spirit of grace has called it your time. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It is your hour. It's your moment for accelerated, sudden blessings yes. of the Lord Most High. You're watching, and you're in a prison. You know why? Because you have never called on the name of the Lord to be saved. You tuned in today. But I want you to know that salvation, the free gift of God, is eternal life by Christ Jesus. And the reason why we're in that prison, you're feeling that prison, is because you've never yet submitted your life, your heart to Jesus to set you free. And the Bible says whom Jesus sets free is free indeed. And so I want to lead you in a moment to where you call upon Jesus. I want you to say these words with me. Say, Jesus, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. I call upon you, Jesus. I call upon you, Jesus. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. Set me free. Set me free. From all things. From all things. From all sin. From all sin. And let today. And let today. Mark a new season. Mark a new and season. And mark a new day. And mark a new day. Jesus, thank you. Jesus, thank you. As I've you. called upon you. As I've called upon you. You've come you. to live inside of me. You've come to live Inside I'm me. born again. I'm born again. A new life. A new life. Of freedom comes of now. freedom comes now. You are my Lord. You are my Lord. You know, there's something powerful, Brenda, when we pray that That's prayer. So right. And we submit and we surrender our hearts and our lives to Jesus. You, you yeah. know, Hank, and it's even powerful to pray that. I want to encourage you today that if you have walked through prison seasons in your life, to pray prayers of submission to God and commitment to Him on a regular basis basis, even if you've been saved for years and you've walked with God, getting up in the morning and saying, God, I just give you myself today afresh. You know, that releases prison doors by itself. It is yeah. freeing to know. You yeah, know, the Bible, I was thinking, Hank, of that scripture, just as you were praying that prayer, the scripture that says, submit yourself, therefore, to God. Mm -hmm. Submit to God. When you submit to God, then you have the power, according to James 4, 7, to then resist the enemy and stand against those prisons that he tries to erect in your mind and in your thoughts. And so just submit your life to God afresh every day. And I believe you will see a season of the miraculous like never and before. And we do that by drawing near to God. That's and so right. I want to encourage you, you stay close to Jesus. You continue to stay in the word of God. Also get the material that we are offering to you so that you can learn how to have them as keys unlock you and to set you free and to live a life of freedom. Not just be free once, but be free all the time. And so I want to encourage you to do so. Thank you, faithful partners. If you've not yet partnered with us, I'm encouraging you to do so so that we can continue to bring the word of the Lord and connect you to the word of the Lord and help connect you to that anointing that'll set you free. Well, until next time, we're Hank and Brenda, and we are taking you to a new level. Stay strong. Do you ever feel trapped and unable to fully accomplish your spiritual goals? For your love gift this month to help us proclaim deliverance to those who are hurting, Hank and Brenda Kuhneman want to send you this powerful teaching series titled, Coming Out of Your Internal Prison. One of the keys for living a successful life is to deal with the emotional strongholds that so many of us don't realize are there. It's time for you to be unlocked, delivered, and set free. For your gift of $35 or more, we will send you Hank and Brenda's four CD set coming out of your internal prison with powerful teaching that will elevate you to a place of freedom. In addition, you will also receive Brenda's companion book, including a set of declarations which confront the conditions that bind you and help manifest your breakthrough. To get yours today, call us toll free at 855-777-7907 and mention offer number 817 or visit us online at hankandbrenda.org.